It's the Airedale Homestead here today. Well, we had some rain this morning, and it's moved out. And uh, so, I've decided, eh, it's a good time. Let's try to dress up these windows a little bit. So what I'm going to do is try to build a couple planter boxes go along the bottom of these windows. So I'm bringing some of that mint and uh, lemon balm and sage and stuff like that that's uh, kind of volunteering itself outside the raised bed. And we'll put them down here in these boxes so we don't have to walk all the way to the garden to get mint in that whenever we want it. So join me as we attempt to do this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get some uh, rough cut cedar that we cut on the portable mill. If you haven't seen the portable mill, please go check out the videos. It's in there. But we rough cut this a while back ago and we're going to try to make some use of it. All right, I'll get back with you in just a minute when we get up there. All right, guys, let's catch you up on what I've done so far. Well, I went and located some wood out of the the pile out there and uh, for the bottom I got some one inch by five inch boards it's five inches wide and an inch thick this is what I'm going to use for the base because I wanted something a little bit thicker to drill into and you know it's going to support some weight on it from the dirt so I just wanted something a little bit thicker all right but uh they're 44 inches long because I measured the window uh, the trim work on the outside of the window to the trim work on the outside on the other side, and it's 44 inches. So that's all we've done is, oh, let's see, do this one-handed here. If we've run it out, 40, right at 44 inches. And what I've done is uh, I'm gonna put drain holes in this, and just like I've done. This is the other base. I've already put the drain holes in it, and that's just a show you here just a 5 8 paddle bit that I ran through it and my battery drill and uh, I cut everything with the handsaw so there's no electric uh, plug-in power there's electric drill but not plug-in or battery power drill but what I done was it's 44 inches so I come in here Hope y'all can see that. Come in two inches on each side, on this side and the other. Then I come down halfway, which is two and a half inches. Then, that's what I done. From here to here is every 10 inches. Because once you take, you know, the two inches on each side, you have 44 down to 40. So every 10 inches, I come down two and a half. That's where I'm gonna put my holes. So we're gonna have three holes down through here for drainage. Now, uh, you know, you can do different size holes if you want to. You can do different number of holes if you want smaller holes. But I just want something for the excess water to drain out of. And uh, what we're going to do is, once we get these drilled, oh, let's get this in here. Once we get these drilled, then I'm going to take a piece of screen, recycle a piece of screen, and put it over top of these holes. And that's going to keep me you on know, my dirt from leaving out of here when the water goes out. And if there's a, a gap down here or something like that or in the wintertime when I'm not using them, uh, in the springtime, if the bees beat me to it, they won't uh, come up inside and I'll have a yellow jacket's nest inside here. Because uh, last year I had a uh, flower pot sitting outside. I had some dirt in. I planned on planting in it. I didn't get to it in time. They went down the side of the uh, flower pot, made a hole from the top, then come in one of the drain holes in the bottom, and made another hole. So they had two entrances coming into that flower pot. And apparently there was a void in the dirt in there, or they made one one. So they lived in flower pot. I didn't get rid of them because I had other flower pots, and you know, yellow jackets. They are mean. They are. Ain't ornery little things but they do eat a lot of caterpillars and bugs out of the garden so they wasn't in my way so i kind of just let them be now uh once we drill these out 
the sawdust from it. We're going to keep that too. Because I can always put that in a little nylon bag and uh, hang it on an old clothes hanger at my closet. It makes the closet smell good. And some moths and stuff like that don't like it. So got to keep them out of there too. So basically all we done was, you know, we cut these. These are the bottoms. These are going to be the end caps. I did not make these angled. I wanted them square on purpose. You can angle these if you want to and put a bevel on the bottom of this for your front board to lay at an angle and tilt outward or however you'd like. But these are our side pieces. Four of them are cut. Now, this is the front. It's a little thinner than what I cut the back. Back's a little thicker. Because I wanted the back, since it's going to hold and attach to the building, I wanted it a little bit thick, thicker than I wasn't really worried about the front as much. But uh, basically all I had to do for this was make sure you got your ruler, straight edge for marking it out, a pencil for making the marks. I already showed you the paddle bit. Whether you use electric or handsaw, either electric bat or battery, or you can have a, the old timey hand crank drills to make your drain holes. And we got a paintbrush laying here. This is going to be more for the ladies on this. We're going to attempt to do something to spiff this up and make it more of a crafty project. Being an artist myself, I can't leave it alone. I got to try something. So, what I'm going to do is I've got a couple old stencils where I used to do woodworking. And I'm going to place this in the middle. And I'm going to take these edges down to keep it from moving. And get some paint. And we're going to dab these designs on here. Just to give it something different on the outside of the house. Just to make it look nice. So, but that will be uh, here in a minute. After we get some other stuff done on it. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to work on this because I don't have a tripod to put this on. So trying to hold it and woodwork with one hand just don't really work. So I'm going to get them other holes drilled and get them ready to go. And uh, I'll catch back with you in just a little bit when I get a couple things done. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, what I've done is I've went down through here and drilled me some pilot holes for my screws. And this is the back that will screw into the bottom here, we got our other holes drilled, our other piece here. And we got our shavings and that cleaned up, give us a little bit more room to work. And uh, basically this is going to set up like this. This piece right here, we'll just screw into this back rail. Now, you, know, you just got to be careful when you're screwing these in, especially into the cedar, when the cedar is really dry like this. You don't put too much torque on it because you'll split the wood out. So just tighten it down just enough to, to hold it pretty good. Just don't overdo it. Because it's not like pine. It doesn't uh, collapse in on itself and countersink the, the screw that easy. Uh, my experience with this, the Eastern uh, Red Cedar is that if you put too much torque on it, it's likely to crack and split rather than countersink itself down into it like you would on pine or, or poplar. All right, let me get this put together and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay guys, I'm back. I've got that stencil that I showed you earlier. All I've done was just centered it in the board and taped it down. I'm trying to keep my shadow over top of the area so y'all can see it. It's getting really bright outside. And uh, you know, you can use any time of any type of exterior uh, paint that you want. You can dab it with a brush, like I was going to earlier. But uh, after going through leftover paint and that, the only thing I really got is a can of yellow exterior spray paint. So we're going to put it on there and see how it does. And uh, what we're going to do is when we go over it, we're just going to do light shots of it. And don't try to fill it all in at one time because you'll get runs and globs and it just won't look right 
and especially with these stencils the lines are so thin on the carvings that if you do a heavy one it'll run under and join the lines underneath it then when you try to take this off you'll rip your paint off as well and you'll mess your stencil up all right guys i'll be back in just a minute okay guys this is after a couple coats of the spray paint you know it's it's soaking into this because it's a dry and that's fine that's what i wanted uh y'all can do it different but i wanted the rough look i've got the t111 on the outside of the cabin and i wanted the this rough look rough zone and the faded kind of make it look like it's weathered and that i didn't want it real bright on the outside but that's the floral design from the template it came out pretty decent so that was pretty good like I said we used pieces of scrap uh, screen and all I done was just cut it and staple it just to keep the dirt from going through and what I'll do now is I'll put me a couple pre-drilled holes back here on this back and use longer screws to screw it into the, the side of the cabin but I just wanted to show you all that, that turned out pretty good considering how dry this was that was about a uh, three coats because of uh like i said how dry this is it soaked it up very quickly but uh y'all can do it any way you want y'all could you know you can plane this down and get the real shiny look to it uh once you plane it sand it and uh you can even put you know a protective coating over it to keep the shine to it if you want uh, after you put this on here you can spray shellac it or whatever you want i'm gonna leave it here as it fades i i think it'll look better for the rustic look i'm going for uh it would be nice if i could find a template that had the flower then had the leaves separate I could have done that if I was going to do the paintbrush and dabbing. I could have done a different color for the flower according to the leaves. But since I spray painted, it, it's kind of impossible as close as they were together. So uh, this is it. Uh, we're going to go hang it up on the uh, cabin now. I'll get back with you in a second. All right, guys. We got that hung. And that's what it looks like. I hope you all can see it. Cause, uh, the sun's pretty bright out here today but it's done pretty good and I dropped it below that trim board that way if any water does drip off the cabin and hit the dirt it doesn't splash it up on a window so uh, I'll have get them filled up with dirt and get them planted and uh, do an update when I get that done but uh, right now that's what it looks like so if y'all enjoyed this little project, please you know, subscribe, share it, comment, any suggestions or anything, please leave a comment and uh, we'll get back with you on the next video. Until then, have fun. Good day.